subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 24th of December. India's Omicron cases rise to 358 new strains spreading fast says government. Steep fall in rupee against US dollar worries Pakistan's businessman. And at least 38 dead after packed ferry catches fire in Bangladesh. And now for all the details. India recorded 122 cases of the Omicron variant of the COVID-19 in a span of 24 hours, the highest so far, pushing its tally in the country to 358, 114 of which have recovered. India's health ministry on Friday said that the world is witnessing the fourth surge in the COVID-19 cases and urged people to not lower their guard. India's health ministry on Friday said that there are 358 Omicron cases in 17 states and union territories across the country and 114 of these cases have recovered. Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan in a press briefing on the COVID-19 situation in the country said top 5 states with the highest number of active cases at the moment are Kerala, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and Karnataka. Bushan said Omicron has a significant growth advantage over Delta and it's spreading fast through communities with a doubling time of between 1.5 to 3 days. He said that the world is witnessing the fourth surge in COVID-19 cases and urged people to not lower their guard. So there are now 358 uh, Omicron cases in 17 states and UTs of India. There are 17 states and UTs, 358 cases. and 114 of them have recovered commenting on the call for boosters to counter the spread of omicron bushan said that the government stand is clear that the decision on boosters will be taken on the basis of scientific evidence amid omicron uptick prime minister narendra modi who chaired a high level meeting on thursday directed the authorities to ensure heightened and close monitoring of emerging hotspots through effective surveillance of cases Meanwhile several states across the country have imposed travel restrictions and announced night curfew as precautionary measure amid rising omicron cases. On Friday Northern Uttar Pradesh state imposed a night curfew from 11 pm to 5 pm local time a day after Maharashtra state imposed the same. In news from Pakistan Traders and the business community in Pakistan has lamented that the frequent weakening of the Pakistani rupee has increased cost of doing business and inflation. And at first Prime Minister Imran Khan's government to take urgent measures to stabilize the currency. Pakistan's rupee hit a record low closing at 178.15 against the US dollar this week. The traders and businessmen in Pakistan's Karachi city have lamented that the frequent weakening of the Pakistani rupee has increased cost of doing business and inflation while they already struggle to come out of fallout of COVID-19 pandemic. The South Asian country has faced growing economic challenges with high inflation, sliding forex reserves, a widening current account deficit and a depreciating currency. Pakistan's rupee hit a record low closing at 178.12 against the US dollar on Thursday. The rupee has lost 13.06% of its value since July 1, the start of country's fiscal year. Businessmen said PM Imran Khan's government should take urgent measures to stabilize the currency. डॉलर महंगा हो रहा है पाकिस्तानी रुपए की जो है ना वो कीमत जो है ना वो उसकी पाकिस्तानी रुपए की कदर कम हो रही है जिस वजह से जो आप परचेजिंग में जो है ना हर बंदे की जो है ना सकत जो है ना कम होती जा रही है जब परचेजिंग की सकत हर बंदे की कम होती जा रही हो जाएगी तो लोगों के जो है ना काम जो है ना वो काफ़ी ज़्यादा ठंडे हो जाएंगे हर गरीब अमीर हर बंदा ये कह रहा है कि भाई महंगाई बहुत है मेरा गुजारा नहीं हो रहा कुछ लोग खुदकुशियाँ कर रहे हैं कुछ लोग चोरियों पे डकेटियों पे लूट मार पे उतर आए क्यों महंगाई होगी ऑटोमेटिक बेरोजगारी बढ़ेगी 
Meanwhile, local media reported Pakistan continues to rely significantly on international commercial banks to produce dollar inflows to avoid depletion of foreign currency reserves. Out of the $802.3 million in foreign loans raised in November 2021, Islamabad received $663.2 million from international commercial banks. In news from Bangladesh, at least 38 people have died in Bangladesh after a deadly fire swept through a ferry in the southern district of Jalakati, a fire service official said on Friday. The fire started from the engine room of the ferry at around 3 a.m. local time, the official added. The death toll could climb further as more than 50 people have been admitted to hospital with some passengers still missing and some others in critical condition, said Zohar Ali. Jalakati District Administrator. The cause of the fire was not immediately clear and investigations were ongoing. Moving on to news from Maldives. Bangladesh and Maldives signed four important agreements in sectors including health and education after a meeting between Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli in Mali on Thursday. It was PM Hasina's maiden official visit to Maldives that concluded on Thursday evening. Bangladesh and Maldives signed four key agreements in sectors including health and education after a meeting between Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli in Malay on Thursday. During delegation-level talks, both the leaders discussed cooperation in areas of bilateral trade, health, tourism, people-to-people -to -people ties and issue of terrorism and climate change. The agreements include recruitment of qualified health professionals, renewal of MOUs in healthcare and medical sciences, cooperation in the areas of youth and sports development, and to eliminate double taxation on income taxes. Hasina also announced her government's decision to facilitate visas on arrival for Maldivian nationals in context of improved pandemic situation as she underscored strong bilateral ties between the two countries. We also discussed our cooperation in multilateral fora, support for each other candidature and cooperation in countering terrorism. We agreed to work together to face the challenge of climate change and the early repatriation of forcibly displaced Rohingya Muslims to Myanmar. Vice President of Maldives Fazal Nassim also paid a courtesy call on Hasina. The Bangladesh Prime Minister arrived in Malay on December 22. Her maiden visit to Maldives concluded on Thursday evening. After long exhausting journeys via Qatar and US military bases, Afghan refugees settle in the city of Bowling Green, Kentucky, where they start a new American way of life. Have a look. After exhausting journeys that took them from Kabul to Qatar to European cities to U.S. military bases, Afghan families fleeing the Taliban alighted in Kentucky, in a small city well-versed in receiving refugees. Bowling Green has welcomed waves of refugees over four decades, beginning with the Cambodians in the 1980s, then Bosnians in the 90s plus Iraqis, Burmese and Congolese and others which have helped make the city a cultural melting pot. Wazir Khan Zadran was a tribal leader who fought 20 years ago against the Haqqani network, a powerful faction within the Taliban. Although he more recently worked with a non-governmental organization, he knew the Taliban would come for him. Zadran said the Americans saved him and his family by picking them in the Chinook helicopter in August and taking them to the Kabul airport. After expelling a New Mexico military base, they were sent to Bowling Green and quickly realized they had lucked out in their new American lives. And we are so happy uh, in Bowling Green and everything is good. My children is going uh, nowadays to school uh, and uh, and the government uh, here, NGO center, and all they are doing very well with us. Also, the local community is helping us, and they are coming and they are introducing the culture to us. In the aftermath of rising anti-immigrant and refugee sentiment during the Trump administration, the U.S. government is now handling its biggest refugee evacuation since Vietnam. Mike Givens, leader of Bowling Green's Forest Park Baptist Church, says. Congolese refugees have breathed new life in the community. 
our community has changed so that if we do not uh, seek or, or, or go after the immigrant population, our church will not survive because the population has changed so dramatically and the older church is dying out and we're trying to get uh, new members into our church that live in the community that will extend the life of the church. And that's our goal. Bowling Green offers agricultural and manufacturing jobs boasting an assembly plant that makes Chevrolet Corvette. Zadran, whose six children are learning songs in English and even sent off Dear Santa letters, will likely see an estimated 350 more Afghans resettle in Bowling Green in 2022. Ice skating season got off to a smooth start this week in Shimla city of India's northern Himachal Pradesh state as snowfall left a mantle of ice in the country's famous rink. Despite bone-chilling weather, enthusiastic locals are flocking to the rink for their favourite sport. During the winter season, the rink, which is being run here since 1920, fascinates tourists from across India and other parts of the world. As mercury plummeted beyond freezing point, the sessions of ice skating has started at the historic rink in Shimla city of India's northern Himachal Pradesh state. Ice skating season got off to a smooth start this week as snowfall left a mantle of ice in country's famous stream. Dozens of ice skating enthusiasts were seen enjoying the sport, especially youth and school children. Open ice skating accompanied by music is further cheering the atmosphere. Since I was three years old, I like to skate and I enjoy a lot when I skate, I feel joyful. And since from two years when COVID pandemic started, there was no fun because we can't touch each other, we have to maintain social distancing, so we can't enjoy that much. Weather in December offers favorable conditions for ice skating. This is the only open-air ice skating rink in the country and is being run here since 1920. The organizers and authorities of the Shimla Ice Skating Club are happy to start skating and are expecting maximum sessions in this winter season. We always keep our fingers crossed. In time we always pray to God to give us clear sky. And the more clear sky, the more skating. And I hope uh, this year also we'll get more clear sky. Once it snows, it, uh, snow is also very important, I know. But once it snows, after that we, we get good clear sky. I think we should again go somewhere like 100 sessions, 90, 80, 90 sessions. However, at the same time, the organizers are worried over changing climate and its impact on the rink. Shimla has the largest semi-natural ice skating rink in India and the city's ice skating club hosts the annual ice skating carnival which attracts hundreds of sports lovers from across the country. A 126-year-old church in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory will once again reverberate with traditional prayers on Christmas as it has been reopened for the public for the first time in over three decades. For the region's small Christian community, it is a dream come true before the major festival on Saturday. One 26-year-old St. Luke's Church in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir will once again reverberate with traditional bells and religious songs on Christmas as it has been reopened for the public after over three decades. The reopening of the church in Srinagar's Dalgate area is a dream turning into reality for the region's small Christian community. Built by the Missionary Society of England, it boasts of Gothic-style colonial-era architecture. Dozens of workers restored the church's floors, roof and hand grave stones near the entrance in a year-long restoration exercise by the government in the Union territory. It is like a, a dream comes true for a whole the community because the uh, church was so closed from last almost 40 years, 35 years. So we are happy to, that it is again open for public and open for community. And uh, obviously we will offer prayers also. Meanwhile, the Christians in other parts of India decked up churches ahead of the major festival on December 25. Considered a season of love and peace, 
Christmas is widely celebrated in metros and other big cities by singing carols, lighting candles, decorating Christmas trees and exchanging gifts. This year, due to the COVID-19 protocols in place, the festivities are likely to be limited. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and Merry Christmas. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.